Binge the full week ad free over at patreon.com slash inspired disorder. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality. Top five 2020 pop culture. I mean, obviously 2020, you got the pandemic, you got the election. Uh, I tried to stick with things that touched uh, the culture specifically were big changes in the culture uh just impactful things uh which obviously the the pandemic uh the global pandemic uh has affected everything and given opportunity uh for things that probably never would have happened um so i'm not taking the pandemic i'm not taking covid19 as the pop culture uh thing but i am doing my top five let's start off my top five with number five which I I had to do some I mean the one thing that everybody had to watch when it came out because it was early in the pandemic everybody was home everybody was most the majority of people in the United States were actually taking the pandemic seriously and it hit it dropped on Netflix and I'm taking number 5 I'm taking Tiger King as the 2020 my my number 5 of 2020 pop culture tiger king just crazy characters it came out the perfect time everybody's home they need a distraction from all the insanity not only the insanity of the pandemic but also the insanity of president trump um and tiger king was that perfect distraction that perfect thing to binge it was better than a movie because it was multiple episodes of this documentary series following this crazy guy who ran not only just one crazy guy who ran a a large cat sanctuary zoo uh, kind of tourist destination, but the world of people that do this same thing and the drama that exists within that world. Just a crazy, crazy thing to come out at the perfect time this year in a crazy year. Tiger King, which it feels like years ago that Tiger King came out, but it was literally, uh, it was probably came out in like March, uh, but it was the thing that everybody saw. Not everybody liked Tiger King, but everybody watched it. Uh, so that's my number five for 2020 pop culture. Number four in my 2020 pop culture is TikTok. TikTok, the the app, the new social, it's not a new social media app, but this was the year where TikTok really made a big explosion culturally in the United States. Uh, I mean, I personally got into TikTok this year. It's basically just a video. It's like what Vine used to be, but it has better integration with music. Uh, You can kind of just, there's, it has a lot more uh, flexibility and it's almost like a content creation uh, platform as well. Uh, But, I mean, it got most of its popularity because uh, Trump was crying about it because the TikTokers, the 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 young people that were on TikTok uh, were able to organize and really kind of screw with uh, Trump and his rallies. Uh, They were also the go to place uh, that I went to during all the protests, the Black Lives Matter protests. Uh, this year it was one of the best ways to get first-hand look at what's actually going on because I don't watch the news. I, I go to social media. I follow specific people on social media uh, to give me their, uh, their thoughtful and educated uh, knowledge and opinions on things. Uh, but TikTok, I mean, not only the kind of standard, which if you were to talk to somebody that's never used TikTok, they would... Just assume it's all full of young children dancing, uh, which that is not all that TikTok is. TikTok is a video platform. I put up all I put up clips from my podcasts. I put up uh, the making of videos for all of my artwork along with music. Uh, but being able to scroll through, I mean, it's just it's it's so easy to get lost in TikTok uh, watching videos, but. Um, And it was almost banned. It was almost banned because President Trump was a a big, giant crybaby about it. Uh, So TikTok is my number four. Really just, it really took over as kind of something that I would use to get away from. uh, I mean, I would see a lot of what's going on, but it was was also like, I would see a lot of inspiring kind of videos. And I was, there are many times scrolling through TikTok where I I felt choked up and, and 
teared up because of uh, the amazing things that were happening on there. So TikTok is my number four for pop culture, a social media platform. Number three in my top 20, top five, 2020 pop culture. Number three is drive-in movie theaters. A drive-in movie theater, a thing that, that's been dead for years. The idea of driving to a big parking lot and watching a screen far away, listening to uh, the audio through a tiny speaker hooked to your window, uh, has evolved. It has evolved and became something that really changed the game for a lot of performers that were not able to perform during the pandemic. I mean, stand-up comedy being one of the big ones, live music being one of the big ones, but also movies. I mean, drive-ins, not only the rebirth of old drive-ins, but the pop-up drive-ins, uh, all these companies showing mostly older movies. Uh, but it's kind of crazy that something that... It, it's it's almost like as if this pandemic, for whatever reason, like caused all of fast food to be served on roller skates. Right. Like it's this weird, like antiquated, vintage kind of throwback idea of the drive in uh, that's really been dead for many years. I mean, I, I, I remember going to a drive in as a child and uh, they just kind of never existed growing up uh, until the pandemic kind of gave them the opportunity to make that a viable kind of a thing again. And comedians like Burt Kreischer probably touring more than any comedian uh in the in the world burt kreischer's probably toured more during the pandemic doing his drive-in tours uh and then also music musicians doing drive-ins i mean drive-ins have become the new kind of live venue uh so drive-ins are my number three i mean it's just like out of nowhere this dead thing comes back to life uh to breathe life into into art forms that were dying uh so number three driving movie theaters of my top five now number two number two my top five 2020 pop culture draft picks i guess not a draft it's my top five list uh is the ufc sporting event the first major sports uh organization to come back during the pandemic i mean when everything got shut down in March, like everything got shut down almost the same day. Comedians were canceling all their shows. NBA canceled everything. UFC canceled everything. All the major sporting, uh, sporting events and uh, organizations canceled all their stuff. Movie theaters, movies canceled their release dates. Everything was being canceled. Uh, but the first major sporting event, I believe NASCAR was pretty close, uh, but the UFC, Dana White, unlike the president that Dana White promoted being Donald Trump, the guy that said coronavirus was a hoax despite getting the coronavirus, Dana White, being a supporter of him, didn't think the virus was a hoax and did everything in his power to try and evolve his business to comply with safety protocols, to make sure his fighters were safe, but also to make sure that he could put on a product, still create his product, which is amazing. It's inspiring because you see so many, there's restaurants that have done it. There's, there's definitely businesses that have, have evolved to take on these hard times, right? And there's a lot that don't. And then there's a lot of people that are protesting for the lack of evolution in in these businesses uh because they don't want to change their business model for whatever reason so they're uh they're protesting that they have to shut down again but the ufc first sport back fight island was a crazy thing you know the fact i mean it was it was hyped up to be a lot more than it was but it was basically the ufc's bubble so they could put on international fights um they took the pandemic seriously. All of the fighters got tested multiple times. They had strict protocols. I mean, they've definitely gotten looser, especially on the U.S. side uh, in Vegas. Uh, a lot of fighters have been testing positive. But every, every fighter that had themselves or somebody in their camp test positive got pulled. So the UFC took the, the pandemic seriously. They took the virus seriously, and I think they handled it 
uh, especially the beginning, uh, they handled it uh, far more uh, far more seriously than most other sporting organizations, most other businesses. Uh, so the UFC's ability to evolve their production uh, to come back during a pandemic is amazing. And just watching UFC fights without a big crowd is amazing. It's it's I love it. It's almost better. I enjoy it. Able to hear the the corners. I enjoy hearing the actual punches and kicks land. To hear the impact, it, it's definitely similar in a lot of ways to Dana White's uh, Contender Series, uh, which also happened. But uh, yeah, UFC coming back as the first major sport is my number two in pop culture. And number one had to be Black Lives Matter. You want to talk about, I mean, the pandemic also made this protest not only global, but because everybody was out of work and everybody was angry in general, given the opportunity to go out on the streets and protest uh, the injustice of a police officer killing George Floyd on camera while other police officers just stood by you never will probably never see an expression of so much public art at one time black lives matter movement there was an explosion of public art not only of people out on the streets protesting peacefully there was obviously some rioting going on not as much rioting going on as when like a sports team wins and the city bursts into flames I mean, there's definitely some of that going on, but the majority of people, the large majority of people were peaceful protesters, and there was beautiful art everywhere, murals of George Floyd everywhere, murals of Breonna Taylor everywhere, murals of just even the street art. Even the street art, when you saw, there's like this photo of Trump walking through the White House lawn and one of the buildings there just covered in graffiti. And it's just like the most beautiful thing to, to represent what Trump has done to this country. Like he, his inability to manage anything uh, led to one of the, the biggest explosions of, of, uh, of protest and uh, public art. And not only the artwork that was posted everywhere, the murals that were posted everywhere, but there was also performance art. There was just an explosion of art on the streets like we will never see again um even a lot of the demonstrations were beautiful uh the streets that were painted in the big block letters of black lives matter right just amazing it's just something that you will never see and globally i mean it's it's it, it was it was heartwarming to see so many people get behind something to try and find justice uh for somebody that was murdered in cold blood by police. Um, and then to see the police then, you know, attack civilians, shooting them with rubber bullets, disappearing them in unmarked vans, allowing uh, white supremacist terrorists to go shoot them in the streets and do nothing about it. Uh, so, yeah, Black Lives Matter, the BLM movement, uh, protests, and all of the artwork and the beautiful singing and dancing and all the things that came along with it. My number one 2020 pop culture moment is Black Lives Matter. So that's my top five. Of course, there were a lot of other things like Tenet uh, and, and, other, and other things like that. But uh, that's my top five list for 2020. Sign up for Ting's cell phone service. They have super cheap cell phone plans. You only pay for what you use. And you get $25 for credit when you go through my link, inspireddisorder.com slash ting. Use that $25 for your bill, for a new phone. If you already have a phone, bring it on over. I love ting. I've been using them for years, and I think you'll love them too and love saving money. Get yourself $25 in credit. Go through my link, inspireddisorder.com slash Ting. New episodes of the Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on IGTV, YouTube, and everywhere else podcasts are found. Binge the full week ad free over patreon.com slash inspired disorder. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at inspireddisorder.com and follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace out.